Welcome to my channel and welcome if you are new here. It is Monday, so you know what that means. It is meal prep day. I have three absolutely fantastic recipes for you. Breakfast, lunch, and a dessert. That is a mix between a brownie, a cupcake, and it's frosted. So you definitely don't want to miss out on this week's recipes. If you're new, make sure that you are subscribed. Hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss a beat with videos. I do upload most days of the week, so make sure you're subscribed. Thumbs up this video if you love meal prep. And without further ado, we've got some recipes to make, so let's jump right in. breakfast this week, I'm going to be making breakfast egg bites. I'm pretty excited about this recipe. Like I mentioned in my grocery haul, I've been doing a lot of oatmeal based recipes. So I am ready for some protein based recipes. So let's take a look at what's in the egg bites. First, you'll need some unsweetened almond milk or milk alternative of your choice. Oil, I have avocado oil here, about a half of a red bell pepper, diced ham, green onions, red onion. I'm going to add some basil. This is not in the original recipe, but you guys know I love basil, so I'm going to add some of that. You'll also need eggs, of course, salt and pepper, which is also not in the original recipe. I am adding that. And then some of the Trader Joe's light shredded cheese or really any light shredded cheese. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is chop. We've got some chopping to do. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my red onion, these three green onions, about half of this red bell pepper, and a little bit of basil. I'm not sure I love basil, so I'll just dice some up. I'm going to do green onions and basil in one bowl, and red pepper and red onion in another bowl. So let's chop. So the first thing that we're going to do is heat up a small skillet with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. We're going to go ahead and add three ounces of diced ham. I did weigh that out on my food scale. And then we're also going to add the chopped up red onion and red bell pepper. And we're gonna let this cook down until they're translucent and cooked through. While the ham, red bell pepper, and red onion are cooking, we're gonna get our egg mixture ready. So in my bowl here, I have five eggs. We are going to crack five eggs into a medium-sized bowl. Then we are going to add two tablespoons of almond milk or whatever milk you're using. We're going to add the green onions and in my case, I'm adding in the basil as well. Again, I added that to the recipe so that's optional if you wanna add in basil. I have one half of a cup of the Trader Joe's light shredded cheese blend. And then again, as an optional item, I'm going to add in just a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. And then we are going to just whisk this together. You want to whisk just until combined. You do not want to over whisk the mix. Once your onion and ham and pepper mixture is done, we are going to go ahead and add that directly to the egg mixture. We're going to give that another quick whisk together until combined and then we're ready to put these into the muffin pan. So I went ahead and pulled out my muffin pan. I'm going to give it a quick spray with some nonstick cooking spray. We just wanna make sure that these are not sticking and it does make 12 egg bites. So you wanna do all 12 of your muffin pan. And then I'm actually going to use the large scoop that came in that three scoop pack from Amazon. I will go ahead and link it down below for you. And I'm just going to add the egg mixture into each of the muffin cups. And then this is going to go in the oven 350 degrees until it is cooked through. All right, they are going in 350 until they are cooked through probably about 15 minutes or so. 
The egg bites are out of the oven. Don't these look absolutely delicious? I am going to let them cool for just a couple of minutes. I'll pop them out, put them in a container, and kind of show you what I'm gonna pair with them for my breakfast for the week. I'll give you points and calories. So here are my egg bites. I'm going to add just a small piece of wax paper over the top of these because I do have three more to put in this container. And then each day, my plan is to have between two and four, just kind of depending on how hungry I am. On days that I'm working out, I'll probably have a few more because they are so low point in calories. So speaking of points and calories, so it makes 12 little egg bites. They are only one point per egg bite on blue and purple and two smart points per egg bite on the green plan. And each egg bite, 57 calories. So you can have four of these for just over 200 calories and a big punch of protein. So again, it just kind of depends on how hungry I am. I'm going to pair these with some fruit. I have strawberries, blueberries, honeydew melon and one more oh mangoes i have mangoes for my imperfect foods box so lots of fruit and that is going to be breakfast for lunch this week i am making caprice or caprese i'm not sure how you pronounce it i'll put it here on the screen you guys tell me but i'm making those meatballs i'm going to pair that with some roasted potatoes I'm excited for this because I've been really wanting meatballs and it is just such a great source of protein. So let me show you what's in this week's lunch. We are using 99% lean ground turkey. So it makes it really, really low in points, calories and fat. And then I have some basil because that's the theme of this week apparently. And then I'm using these Trader Joe's mozzarella cheese sticks in place of regular mozzarella. I'm just going to cut these up. I didn't want to buy mozzarella cheese when I had these in my refrigerator. And then some cherry tomatoes, salt and pepper, flour and oil. And then for the potatoes, I have these red potatoes from Trader Joe's. I am going to drizzle a little bit of oil on those. And then I'm actually going to season them with the Dax, nothing but the ranch. You guys know this is my favorite thing ever on potatoes. It is absolutely incredible this is the best ranch seasoning i've ever had it's affordable it's clean there's no salt no msg really truly a complete game changer you can make dips dressings add this as seasoning i love it so much and being a clean seasoning i love to support dax they're a small business they are the nicest people highly highly recommend i have all of their spices they have over 20 so definitely check them out i do have 10 percent off and free shipping so you can't go wrong Definitely grab the ranch and any of the other seasonings. They literally are all delicious. So we're gonna put this on the potatoes. So let's get started making some lunch. So the first thing we need to do is chop. I am going to chop up about a half of a cup of cherry tomatoes, three ounces of mozzarella or three cheese sticks. So that makes it really easy. Some fresh basil and then chop up our potatoes to start the roasting. is prepare the potatoes. I have them cut up here in a bowl. This is one and a half pounds of potatoes. I just weighed them out on my food scale before I chopped them up. So to this, I'm going to add one tablespoon of oil because I do want my potatoes to have a little bit of avocado oil or whatever oil you use on them. It just helps everything stick together really well. And then I'm going to add my Dax and I just liberally add it because it's zero points and it is so good. You guys, I'm not kidding about Dax. It's one of the products that I recommend really the most to you. It's one of my favorites. I've been using it for years and years and I just love it. I love their non-salt, no MSG, real ingredient, clean seasonings. They're the best. So I went ahead and just gave that a quick stir. You just want to make sure that the oil and the seasoning is incorporated in the potatoes. And now let's put together the meat for the meatballs. Now let's do the meatball mixture. So I added my one pound of 99% ground turkey here to my bowl. 
And then to that, I'm going to add my chopped up basil. Now the recipe wants a couple of tablespoons of chopped basil. I probably have more like maybe a third of a cup, which is fine with me because you guys know I'm basil obsessed. I love it. And then I have my chopped cherry tomatoes and I have one quarter cup of flour. This is the wheat flour from the Thrive Market. You guys need to check out Thrive down below. You actually get a free gift up to $22 value when you join Thrive. Their prices are 30% less than the grocery store and they have thousands of foods, snacks that you can't find anywhere else. So check out Thrive down below. Three ounces of chopped up mozzarella cheese. And then we are going to season with salt and pepper. And I would say just go ahead and do that to taste. How much salt and pepper do you like? And then last but not least, we are going to add a tablespoon of oil and then stir this all together make sure everything gets combined really well the flour is partially what binds your meatballs so just make sure everything is combined and then we are ready to roll these out onto a sheet pan and get these potatoes and the meatballs into the oven so here's the meatball mixture uh, yum. So again, from that same three scoop pack, I'm just using the medium size scoop to scoop out my meatballs. And then I just have a quarter sheet pan here. I also bought these on Amazon. I'll link them down below for you and a sheet of parchment paper. And I don't really care how many meatballs I get necessarily, just the number that I get out of the recipe. I will divide that by four because this recipe makes four servings. So I'm just going to drop the meatballs on to the quarter sheet pan here and then we will get these into the oven once we put together the potatoes. these meatballs oh my gosh the cheese alone oh i'm so excited oh we're see me sorry guys there we go so we're gonna let these cool the potatoes are still in the oven they're not quite done and then i will package these up i'll be back to show you the potatoes we'll package up exactly what i'm gonna do for lunch how many meatballs how much potatoes we'll go over points and calories but again the cheese and potatoes are done. Look how great these look. So I did go ahead and put my meatballs into my meal prep container. I have three meatballs per day. I'm going to pop in the potatoes, divide that by four. So here is lunch. Doesn't this look absolutely delicious? So let's go over what I'm doing for lunch. Now my breakfast was really low point with the egg bite. So this is a little higher point lunch. You could also make adjustments for yourself if you didn't want to spend this many points. But I'm going to go over exactly what I'm having. So I have three meatballs per day. That is four smart points on the blue and purple plan and five on the green. And I used full fat, delicious mozzarella cheese. So I am fine spending the points on that. And then I did one and a half pounds, like I mentioned, raw potatoes with one tablespoon of oil and then a little bit of the dax, which is zero. So this is five points worth of potatoes. So it's five for the potatoes and four for the meatballs for me because I'm on the blue plan. So that is a total of nine smart points. Now these meatballs are 229 calories for the serving. I didn't figure the calories on the points basically roasted potatoes with a tablespoon of oil. So this is going to be nine smart points. And again, 229 calories for the three meatballs. And these are big meatballs. So I'm excited for this protein packed, well-rounded. I'll probably toss in a veggie of some sort, just kind of whatever we have left over from dinner, broccoli, green beans, whatever it may be. But this is lunch. And for a dessert or sweet treat this week, I am stoked for this. I am actually making brownie cupcakes. So we're mixing brownies and cupcakes together and we are going to frost them with a mint fudge icing. Now you can change the flavor of the icing, but I'm going to do mint because I love all things mint. So let me show you what's in our cupcakes and the frosting. For sure need some protein powder. And of course I'm choosing my live well plant protein. This is in the cacao, basically their chocolate version, 17 grams of complete protein. So this is a real 
whole protein source. You guys know my love for Live Well. They have chocolate or cacao, vanilla, unsweetened, which is great to add to anything that you don't want flavor in. And they also have a coconut and all four flavors are amazing. I do have 10% off for Live Well. I will put it down below for you guys. So definitely check it out. Definitely pick up Live Well. It is plant-based, but it does not have the gritty, odd texture and taste of plant-based protein. It is smooth and creamy and incredible. And it ranges from one to two smart points per scoop, depending on the flavor. So the cacao is actually two smart points per scoop, well worth it, and 17 grams of complete protein. And then you're going to need honey or agave. Cocoa powder, I'm just gonna use cacao powder. That's what I have on hand. You can use any nut butter of your choice. I have cashew butter, vanilla extract, salt, eggs. You can use canned pumpkin, but I have this organic sweet potato puree, so I'm just gonna use this. If you guys didn't know, canned pumpkin is really squash anyways, so this will work just fine for the recipe. And then a can of black beans. I know, how weird is that? I'm using the mint extract, of course, to flavor my frosting. You'll need six packets of sweetener. I love the whole earth. I'm using that. And then, of course, chocolate chips. So these are lilies. So let's make some frosted cupcakes. So we're going to start on the cupcake. So in my bowl here, I have one can of black beans that I drained and rinsed really, really well. So make sure that you are rinsing them really well. To this, we are going to add vanilla extract, about a teaspoon. I have one quarter cup of cocoa powder. It's going to give it that nice chocolatey goodness. I weighed out two ounces of Lily's chocolate chips on my food scale. I also have cashew butter, and this is three tablespoons of cashew butter, also weighed out on my food scale. That's a little tip for you guys. It is much easier to weigh it out on a food scale, especially something like a nut butter or honey, than putting it into a tablespoon and trying to dig it out. So take advantage of your food scale and just weigh it out. I also weighed out the honey, again, on my food scale, and this is four tablespoons. So we're going to add that and see how much easier that is than filling up a tablespoon four times and having to try to dig it out. And then we are going to put in just a pinch of salt because the salt will bring out the sweetness. I have two full eggs and one egg white. And then I have one third cup of canned pumpkin or in my case, sweet potato. And then the last thing that is going in before we grab out a hand mixer, you could also do this in a blender or a food processor, whatever you have on hand, is we are going to add these six packets of sweetener. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. And then let's get out that hand mixer and mix this together. So here is the batter. Now, if you are going to put this in a food processor, make sure that you do not put the chocolate chips in until you've processed the ingredients. It will just shred up the chocolate chips. Then I have a muffin tin here that I've sprayed with just some nonstick cooking spray. I use the Chosen Foods Avocado. And then I've got that same scoop I used for the meatballs. Of course, I washed it. And we're just going to scoop in the mixture into the muffin liner. We want 12 cupcakes total. So we're going to go ahead and get these scooped in and then we'll be ready to get these into the oven. So here are our cupcakes. These are going into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We'll just see how long it takes for them to cook through. Just insert a toothpick and when it comes out clean, you are good to go. And while these are in the oven, let's put together the frosting. So for the frosting, the first thing I did is weighed out one third cup of cashew butter. To that, I'm going to add one cup of canned pumpkin or sweet potatoes, whatever it is that you have. I don't know why pumpkin is so hard to find these days. And then I have two tablespoons of honey. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And again, weighed out on my food scale, so much easier. So we're gonna add the two tablespoons of honey, one quarter cup of cocoa powder, and then we're gonna do two scoops of our Live Well protein. So we want two scoops of protein powder chocolate in this frosting. So there's one and two. And then last but not least, we want some mint extract. 
about a half of a teaspoon. I may put in more just so that it's a little bit more minty because I want that really strong mint flavor to come through. You could do vanilla, you could do strawberry. I mean, you could kind of do whatever you wanted as far as flavoring the frosting, but I am gonna stick with the mint because like I mentioned, I love mint. And then I'm just going to stir this together until everything is nice and combined. And then this is going to be the frosting. And there is the completed frosting. We're just going to set this aside keep it at room temperature until our cupcakes come out of the oven i just pulled the brownie cupcakes out of the oven these look so good these need to cool completely before we frost them so i'm going to let them sit for about 20 minutes until they are completely cooled so here are the brownie cupcakes so this is what they look like they're definitely denser than your traditional cupcake and that's just because they are more like a brownie which is even better so what i've done is i've added the frosting that we prepared into a ziploc bag i'm going to cut the corner here and then we're going to frost these delicious cupcakes <laughs> So here they are. Aren't these so cute? You could pop some sprinkles on there to kind of jazz it up, but this looks so decadent and incredibly delicious. So let's go over points and calories. So each of our brownie cupcakes with frosting included, real whole ingredients, nothing artificial, is five smart points per brownie cupcake with icing. Isn't that amazing? You know how many points cupcakes are normally? I just tried one, you'll see there's one missing here. I wanted to try it. You can't taste the black beans at all. It just adds a really dense texture like a brownie. It's incredible. It is 209 calories per cupcake, which is, again, absolutely nothing. So highly recommend this recipe. I can't wait to have these all week. Thank you for joining me on another meal prep Monday. How excited are you for this week's recipes? I can't wait to dig in every single day and that dessert. Oh, heaven in a WW friendly dessert. I cannot wait. So make sure if you are interested in recreating these recipes that you click the little down arrow right under the video. That'll take you to the description box. In the description box, you're going to find my website, which is where all of these recipes will be, as well as the links and discount codes to some of the products that I shared with you today and everything that I can save you some money on. So it is a huge win. Also, you'll find the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We would love to have you be part of our community. We are 16,000 members strong and growing so head over and join us there give this video a thumbs up if you love meal prep day because who doesn't love meal prep day and of course I'll see you all in my next video happy Monday